Hi guys, this is Rohit. I'm back from the decision tree class. Today we are going to be talking about something called ensembling. Now, if you thought decision tree was easy and very intuitive and very easy to understand, wait for the end of session today. You're going to absolutely love it. This is way more easy, way more intuitive than decision trees. And in fact, there's a slight difference. So till the last lecture session and probably sessions on previous to that, we were talking about different classifier algorithms like decision tree, logistic regression. We in fact talked also about linear regression algorithms like L1, L2 and normal regression. But today onwards, we are going to slightly take all of this a notch higher and we are going to talk about something which are more of the engineering part of data science rather than the maths and computer science part of data science. In fact, today and probably the next lecture onwards, it's something which is which is absolutely engineering gimmicks that you're going to see. And most important thing about all of this is that uh, these are some things that are easily you can come up with the ideas yourselves. You don't need to necessarily go through the slides to come up with the ideas your, yourselves. So the best part would be when you kind of, you know, take out time while doing the slides to kind of take some time out, think about it yourself and come up with the ideas yourself. Right. So that's the best thing that probably can happen. So for now, let's start going into the slides. But only thing to remember this is that this part and probably all the engineering section of data science that we are going to cover today and the next day onwards are the things that basically make a, you as a data scientist separate from the rest of the crowd. What is because the rest of the things right decision tree or logistic regression is something that every one of you have gone through and everyone if you're going to apply it the same way because there's nothing which is like a lot of variance in decision tree. Obviously, you can change from chi-square to Gini and Gini to entropy. There's slight variations here and there, but that's mostly what all of you are going to use. But at the end of the day, when you go back and apply into a real life scenario, you are going to do some of this engineering techniques, which are something which would be completely unique to you, what you think about the data and how you kind of think that the data should be, you know, the different techniques should be applied. So this is something that is completely up to your own creativity. How well can you think out of the box and everything around that? So please take all of this more, I would not say more seriously, but definitely try and understand this as thoroughly as possible because frankly, how well you can do this part of things is what is going to probably uh, define you and separate you from the rest of the crowd, right? So let's start with the session today. So today we are going to be talking about something called ensembling. So before we kind of get there and understand what ensembling is and why do we require it in the first place, let's first understand the fact that we as individuals uh, and we are now cutting back from the data science part into a real life more philosophical discussion about us being as human beings how do we take decisions right let's first understand that and the next part would be how can we mimic the decision making that we do at our end as human beings how can we mimic that and do that for machine learning problems as well right so how do we as human beings take decisions? Obviously, in this slide, you can see that we are not the best people to take decisions, right? We can easily be fooled by different evidences and the same thing that you can probably tamper around and would look very different to us, right? So we as human beings are not the best decision makers by ourselves, right? What do we need to kind of make more robust decisions? What do you do when you when you get confused by a decision? What is the most intuitive thing you do? You would probably call up your friend or someone you probably know is more knowledgeable than you on that particular matter, right? That's what we do, right? That that's very intuitive, right? As human beings ourselves, we are not the best decision makers, so we go and ask other people around. And in fact, that is a very similar concept that we are going to be talking about today. But let's see how. So program so far, obviously, we have talked about basics of Python. We have talked about descriptive inferential stats. We have talked about algorithms like linear regression, L1, L2. These were the type of regression algorithms. We had talked about basic data cleansing, feature engineering, how feature engineering. In fact, apart from all of the sessions we are doing today and the next session, next lecture session, feature engineering is also the other part which kind of makes you stand out, right? Because the rest of the parts, as you can see, logistic regression, decision tree, and all of these are fairly common things that everyone as a data scientist have equal access to, right? But how you do your feature cleansing, feature engineering is one thing that makes you stand out. And so is ensembling and the rest of the thing we are going to cover in the next lecture. So these are a couple of things which constitute the engineering part of data science. And engineering part of the data science is something that is completely up to you. How you do it, how you kind of think creatively, how you can think out of the box to combine different solutions, different ideas. 
that's what makes you a very different and in fact as of today if you go to Kaggle which is one of the top data science competition sites in the world and you go and check any of the solutions you would tend to see a mix of all of this right a mix of feature engineering feature a mix of ensembling and a mix of other things that we're going to talk so the idea being that there are a couple of things which are must know which are L1 L2 regression L1 L2 regularization linear regression logistic regression decision tree these are must knows these are basics if you don't know you cannot really kind of build on the rest of the things that we are going to talk today but just knowing the basics would not help right as a data scientist if you have to grow up you have to kind of make it big you have got to kind of understand this part of things also very well apart from understanding the rest of the things so now that we have talked about it so today we are going to be talking about all these things so first is what is ensembling next is types of ensembling uh then there are different types actually so those are the two different types of ensembling that we are going to talk about in fact three of them right so naive aggregation bootstrap and stacking uh so that's how we are going to proceed today so jay helps right so jay is back again in action and he kind of figures out that what is the best way so our friend lucius has this problem right he has this one particular model and he is not sure if his particular model is really good or not, right? Same way, right? As human beings, we are not very confident about our decisions. So what do we do? We are not very confident, so we go and ask other people, right? So when you don't have a single model which is really not working well, what do you do? The intuition is probably go and ask other models, right? Other learners. So let's understand that a bit more. So this is the concept that I have been talking about. So the one is, so the most important thing is more is better than one, right? When you have when you can train multiple models let's say uh, assuming that you don't have computational constraint or anything of that sort you are you are free to kind of train multiple models on the same data set don't you think that is a much better idea than training just one single model and going ahead with it right it's very intuitive right as human beings you cannot take decisions by yourselves you consult other people similarly why go ahead and trust one single model right your one single model could have an AUC of even 0 0.8 0 0.9 doesn't matter it's still not the best thing right there's probably something which is slightly even more advanced possible right and instead of trying to kind of train one single model to achieve an accuracy or AUC of 100% why not try and train multiple models and see if you by cumulatively aggregating their decisions can you get to 100% AUC, right? So that is everything that is actually about ensembling. So ensembling is this idea where you kind of take, you know, you say, okay, I think I don't trust one model. Let me go ahead and ask multiple models, right? So let me train multiple models on the same data with slight tweaks here and there. And let me train all of them and let me then ask each of those model what do they think about the new point test data point right and how you can probably aggregate the decisions from all of them right so that's all about there is in the ensembling technique and in fact we are going to be discussing about what are we going to exactly cover in ensembling in a while but before we go that let's kind of try and take some more real life examples to understand why ensembling is good so obviously I have explained to you this that ensembling is this concept where you take multiple models instead of going ahead with one model you say let me take multiple models and somehow aggregate the decision the intelligence from all of them into one single model right. So that's the concept of ensembling. So there's a philosophical thought process which is called Condorcet's jury theorem and we are going to talk about that and this is this is not particularly from computer science as such. Uh, this is from a broad social sciences kind of a background that this theorem comes out. What does this theorem say that uh, you know if you have a jury of voters and you need to make a decision whether something is correct or not. So then if each voter has probability P of being correct then the probability that the majority of voter being correct which is L right. So each voter has independently the probability of being correct which is P and then you have the probability of the entire panel of voters being correct as L. So you would tend to see that L would approach one as your number of voters tend to increase, right? So what does this mean that obviously understand this, right? When you go to a Supreme Court or, you know, High Court, then there are really important cases being heard, right? It's not a single judge who hears them, right? There's a bench of judge who kind of hears it. Why is that so? Right? Because one judge can have a bias towards some particular uh, crime case, right? 
when you have a take a bunch of judges you kind of tend to lower down their biases right so you have 10 of them and each of them might have their some own bias of their own right but when you cumulatively take all of their decisions together you would tend to think that the bias has somehow been cancelled out and then you have something which is really good decision right so that's the idea why you would have multiple people on a bench of judges right in fact you go to all of the places where you are probably taking decisions right uh, any, any any kind of debate panel that you can see it's never a single person it's very unlikely that a single person should be judging because we all know a single person judging is not the most effective of idea because a single person may have his or own own bias right which might tend to affect the result so you want to take a aggregation of multiple people and somehow out of that hope that the biases of each of all of them kind of get cancelled and you have a better decision so that's exactly what we are going to talk about here so this is what we have already explained to you so you have if you have a lot of different voters right so in the particular example of Condorcet's jury theorem we talked about individual voters what are the individual voters in case of data science those are individual models what is a verdict verdict is a classification prediction right each of the voters could independently also predict some whether the decision is correct or not and together also the jury can as such predict if the decision is correct or not right and votes are individual predictions right so this is fairly simple right in normal case a bench each of them kind of has the independent capability to judge and you still combine them and hope that they come up with a better judgment the same thing kind of applies here in machine learning as well you have independent models which have the capability of classifications you combine all of them and you come up with model which is probably much better than individually each of them now let's say now let's take an even more uh, realistic example and kind of try and get a mathematical intuition of how well does an ensemble perform as compared to a individual model right so to get that intuition let's kind of go through this particular example say someone um, say you are extremely rich and you have a lot of money to throw away so you want to go ahead and buy an iPhone I have no idea why you want to do that but let's say you have got a lot of money that you want to just stash away and that's why you want to go and buy an iPhone right so what do you do so if you are someone who is not really familiar with phones what are the most intuitive ideas for you you really don't know which is the best iPhone to go at obviously the one default option is let's go ahead with the most latest available one but then that's probably super pricey you want to go ahead with something which is less pricey and you do not know which is the version you should go ahead with what do you do we are intuitive right you would probably go on to first ask a mobile shopkeeper sounds like a you know reasonably good idea because he deals with phones every day and he has around probability of being correct as 80 percent right you go to a youtube gadget reviewer and he has 70 percent time pro he has probability of being correct is 70 percent and you have a friend who's not someone you really trust you're like okay i think but you just because he's your friend and you just would like to kind of give him some importance you go and ask him as well he is not really someone very reliable his probability of being correct is just 60 percent right so now you decide that the phone you so if any one of them kind of recommends some kind of version of the phone you're going to go ahead and buy that that's your decision logic right so now if that is the decision logic that you're going to follow that if any one of them kind of says that this is the best phone to buy it and you go ahead with it right so what is the probability that you as an individual after taking all of their considerations would be incorrect right so your probability of being incorrect is exactly the probability that each of them individually are incorrect right because if any one of them is correct you are kind of sorted right so for you to be incorrect as such you would need all of them three all three of them to be kind of individually incorrect right so what is the probability of them individually being incorrect so the first one's probability is 1 minus 0 0.8 because 80% was the probability of the shopkeeper to be accurate 70% was the probability of the gadget reviewer to be accurate so 1 minus 0.7 is the probability of him being inaccurate and 60% was my friend's probability of being correct so 1 minus 0.6 is his probability of being incorrect so you finally come up with probability which is 0 0.024 so if you can kind of calculate that that's your probability of being incorrect right so which means you have a probability of being correct which is 1 minus 0 0.024 which is 0.976 so 97.6 percent is your probability of being correct after you take individually all of their decisions now let's try and take a moment to kind of appreciate that so you 
as someone who has no clue about what phone to go ahead with what you are doing is just taking decisions from other people who you think are slightly more knowledgeable and probably a lot more knowledgeable than you right so you are combining decisions from all of them and what happened in the process is you came up with a decision which is 97.6 percent chances of being accurate which is way higher than each of your three individual friends right your shopkeeper friend your gadget reviewer and your real friend right so you have a model which is much better than all three of them so that is exactly the concept of unsembling and that is exactly what we want to kind of go out and do here right so we want to take models and somehow combine their probabilities and then finally come up with a model which is much better than individually each of them Log on to Grey Atoms learning platform to unlock more free content. Subscribe to our channel and hit the bell icon for regular updates.